Hi there, folks. It's Matthew Seville for NatureTTL.com. I am again in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night, and this video is going to be a quick tutorial on how to nail sharpness and focus on stars in your nightscape photography. <music> Getting perfectly sharp stars in a nightscape photo is definitely the biggest challenge in nightscape photography. And it's the question I get asked the most, both online and when I'm teaching nightscape workshops. So let's break it down, first and foremost, into two things. You gotta worry about things that could cause blur other than the actual focus of your lens, such as camera shake or tripod shake. And then you gotta worry about actually setting focus on the stars. So before we talk about focusing, let's talk about things that could cause your images to be blurry, even if you did perfectly focus on the stars. Number one is having a wobbly tripod. If you don't have a rock solid sturdy tripod, you're definitely going to be hurting. You're going to be, it's going to be an unpleasant experience. You've got to get a heavy duty tripod. If you're going with a lightweight tripod, you're gonna have to use a two second timer or even a 10 second timer. Or if it's even just a little bit windy, you're going to be almost completely out of luck because the wind will vibrate on the tripod legs. If it's a lightweight two pound tripod or something like that, then it may always be a little bit soft or fuzzy even if you nail focus perfectly. So get a heavy duty tripod. You can buy them used for a hundred bucks or 50 bucks, or you can buy a nice heavy duty one. The, the Slick 700DX is my favorite. You can get it online for a hundred bucks or so. Brand new that is. And then get a solid, solid head as well. A solid head, if you have a solid legs, but you have a flimsy floppy head that just kind of slowly droops, then you're gonna have trouble as well. It's gonna be just a frustrating experience trying to nail sharpness on the stars. So that's the main thing. Wind and having a solid tripod that you gotta set that foundation before you even start focusing on the stars. Okay, so let's talk about focusing on the stars. Now I'm gonna demonstrate with an old cheap lens because I don't want you to think that you need a very expensive, ultra fast, ultra sharp lens to get very sharp stars in your nightscape photos. This is an old 50 millimeter manual focus lens. You can buy them very, very affordably, or you can get a brand new 50 millimeter F1.8 lens that has autofocus as well for general photography. But let's get started and talk about focusing itself. First, before we talk about the right way to focus, I have to mention a few suggestions that I've seen online that are very much the wrong way to set focus on the stars. One of those is focusing before sunset, focusing on a distant object like the horizon or, or something distant, and then leaving focus alone or putting tape on your lens to, to lock focus then, and then waiting hours and hours and hours until it's the middle of the night and then hoping that focus is still perfectly sharp on the stars. Now this can work, but the risk of bumping your lens's focus, even if you put tape on the lens, the risk is pretty great. And I just don't recommend that method. Another thing that some people have suggested is you can autofocus on stars with certain cameras. And again, it might be possible with a very modern, the latest and greatest camera, a very, very, very fast and sharp lens, you might be able to autofocus on the stars. But for most cameras and most lenses, I absolutely recommend manually focusing on the stars. Last but not least, you may notice that certain lenses, most lenses, have an infinity mark on the lens, or they have what's called a hard stop at around infinity. And a lot of people will suggest just rack the lens all the way to infinity or to the end of the focus, and you should be good enough, quote unquote, for sharpness on stars. 
you might be close enough for Instagram resolution images, but you're not going to be nailing focus perfectly on stars if you just set it to the end of the focus or even if you set it precisely to the infinity mark on your lens. Unfortunately, that is lesson number one as we get into actually how to nail focus. Infinity, the mark of infinity on your lens, is not necessarily perfect for stars. You might be just to the left or just to the right of infinity, and that's where we're gonna start. Doing test exposures. If your lens has an infinity mark, start there, but don't trust it. Do a little bit of testing just to the left of infinity, just to the right of infinity, and see, zoom into 100% after you've taken your sample, your, your test photos, and check and see, was infinity the perfect sharpness? Or did the stars get slightly sharper, a little bit more small pinpoint dots of light just to the left of infinity or just to the right of infinity? You might be surprised to find, especially on very hot summer nights or very cold winter nights, that infinity changes or star focus changes just a little bit from the actual infinity mark. And as I hinted just now, you might find that the same exact lens on the same exact camera is also slightly different if it's very, very hot or very, very cold. That's number two thing to worry about or to remember when you're out shooting. Just because you've memorized where stars are sharp and you say, oh, it's just to the left of the infinity mark or it's right on the infinity mark. If you did that test on a very warm summer night, you need to redo that test on a very cold winter night because certain lenses could shift a little bit. Even some of the latest and greatest lenses can shift a little bit when you are checking, when you're shooting in very, very different temperature conditions. All right, last but not least, what if you have a lens that has no markings for focus at all? It's just, it has manual focus, but there's no infinity mark, there's no distance scale. A lot of modern lenses are going this route, especially mirrorless lenses or kit lenses. They just have no markings whatsoever. You, unfortunately, are going to have to go straight to the last method for focusing on stars, and that is using your camera's live view. And it's pretty impressive, actually. Even if you don't have the fastest lens, if you have an f3.5 or an f2.8 lens, you can still focus on stars in live view. The trick is to turn your in-camera sharpening all the way up to its maximum. I figured this out years ago and I've been using this trick ever since. You gotta be shooting raw because if you're shooting JPEG or shooting video, then turning your in-camera sharpening all the way up will ruin fine detail in these photos. But if you're shooting raw, the in-camera sharpening doesn't matter. So turn the in-camera sharpening all the way up and then go into live view with your aperture at its absolute fastest, widest, maximum, brightest setting, and your ISO turned all the way up. If you have exposure simulation turned on, you're gonna need to worry about your shutter speed and your ISO as well, and point your camera at the brightest star or planet in the sky. You don't wanna put it dead center. You might wanna put it right off center around the rule of thirds. Then zoom in in live view to that exact spot where you know the star is going to be. That's the only way you can find a star in the inky blackness of the, the dark viewfinder when you've zoomed into 100%. People say, I can't see any stars. You can see the brightest stars in the sky, even if you have an f3.5 lens. So you have gotta place the star in the center or near the center of the frame and then zoom in to where you know it is. Now when you've zoomed in to 100%, I recommend racking focus back and forth like five or 10 times so that you see the little dot on the, the, where the star is. It'll be, a big, it'll be a big circle and then it'll get to a little dot and it'll be a big circle on the other side of focus. So rack focus back and forth, go back and forth so that you can get a very good feeling for where the perfect sharpness or the, the smallest dot pinpoint ought to be. Then you slowly dial it to just that spot 
and boom, there you go. You've got perfect sharpness on stars and you're ready to shoot. Okay, so now that we've set focus, let's shoot some photos. Also, don't forget that even if you have a very rock solid tripod and perfect focus technique, you may still get motion in the stars if your shutter speed is too long. So remember the 500 rule. Take the number 500, divide that number by your focal length, and make that number your shutter speed. Or use an app like PhotoPills with the Spot Stars feature to get a more accurate shutter speed based on your camera's resolution and your lens focal length. All right, well, it's almost sunrise. Thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe for more videos and comment below if you have any questions about how to get perfect sharpness on the stars in your nightscape photos. We'll see you next time. Take care.